Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for September 16th. September 16th is the 259th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 260th in leap years with 106 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is astrolatry, astrolatry. <laughs> it's like idolatry only about stars. It is the worship of stars and other celestial objects, and by stars I do not mean movies, stars, media, stars, music, stars, not those kind. I mean celestial stars, sky stars like Antares, Venus, the moon, <laughs> the Perseid meteor shower, constellations. There's a lot of constellations out there, a lot of stars and a lot of constellations. If you appreciate and enjoy matters of sky, you might enjoy the Sky Guide or Sky View apps for your smart device. Sky Guide usually appears as a night sky, whether it's day or night, shows the stars, celestial objects, and constellations as they might appear in a night sky, whether it's day or night, I already said that. <laughs> sky View shows these objects superimposed on whatever is in your device's viewfinder. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I got Sagittarius right here in my living room, but here's what I'm gonna show you instead. Anyway, thanks, uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. You can do that with the link in your email messaging or social media. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And also there's a link in the show notes to my Day in History series. And on YouTube, I'll also put it in the iCards right up here. In Vimeo, it'll just be in the show notes. And with that, we're going to start in the year 681, when some 43 years after he died, Pope Honorius I was posthumously excommunicated by the Sixth Ecumenical Council. Of course, I had to wonder why. I mean, if he was an exemplary pope, why in the world did they find it necessary to excommunicate him after his death? Well, it seems that he believed that Christ had two natures and one will. Two natures and one will, which is called monothelitism. Monothelitism. But the church had come to prefer to believe that Christ had two wills, human and divine, that corresponded to his two natures. What a terribly confusing situation for a human to find oneself in. But that, uh, that feature with the two wills and the two natures is called diothelitism. Monothelitism and diothelitism. So the church felt that Christ had diothelitism <laughs> and he was kind of agreeing with the idea of monothelitism. And initially they dinged him for believing in it, but eventually they really just dinged him for not putting a stop to it. 43 years after he died, don't even give a fellow a chance to defend himself. What the heck? On September 16th, 1620, pilgrims set sail from England on the Mayflower. Polish Dutch physicist and engineer, Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit inventor of the thermometer, passed away on this day in 1736 at the age of 50. This is the birthday of American businessman and philanthropist James Cash Penny. I believe that was James Cash Penny Jr. I think his father was senior. Anyway, he was born on September 16th, 1875. And if that name seems familiar to you at all, it is that uh, he is indeed the one who founded the J.C. Penney stores in 1902. He lived to the age of 91. This is the birthday of American Canadian inventor and businessman Jacob Schick. Born September 16, 1877. Considered the father of electric razors, he lived to the age of 59. On September 16, 1893, settlers made a land run for prime land in the Cherokee Strip in Oklahoma. 
September 16, 1908, the General Motors Corporation was founded. This is the birthday of America director, producer, and screenwriter Alan Funt, born September 16, 1914. Creator of the TV show Candid Camera, <laughs> Alan Funt lived to the age of 84. This is the birthday of American singer, songwriter, guitarist, and producer B.B. King. He was born September 16, 1925, and lived to the age of 89. This is the birthday of American actor Peter Falk, born September 16, 1927. He lived to the age of 83. Also the birthday of American boxer and actor Mickey Rourke, born September 16, 1952. He turned 68 in 2020. This is the birthday of baseball great Robin Yount, born September 16, 1955. He played with the Milwaukee Brewers and was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1999. He made it in with 77.5% of the votes on the first ballot. He turned 65 in 2020. Good day for baseball birthdays, by the way. This is the birthday of American baseball player and coach Oral Hirschheiser, born September 16, 1958. He debuted with the L.A. Dodgers and retired with the L.A. Dodgers and played for the Cleveland Indians, the San Francisco Giants, and the New York Mets in between. <laughs> Oral Hirschheiser turned 62 in 2020. September 16, 1961, the United States National Hurricane Research Project dropped eight cylinders of silver iodide into the eye wall of Hurricane Esther. Wind speed reduced by 10%, giving rise to Project Storm Fury. Typhoon Nancy, with possibly the strongest winds ever measured in tropical cyclones, made landfall in Osaka, Japan on September 16, 1961. Eight people escaped from East Germany to the West in homemade hot air balloon on September 16, 1979. Hurricane Ivan made landfall in Gulf Shores, Alabama as a Category 3 hurricane on September 16, 2004. On the list of items for September 16 in Wikipedia was an item that said that five months before the COVID-19 stock market crash, an overnight spike in lending rates in the United States prompted the Federal Reserve to conduct operations in the repo market. Best I can tell, we're not talking about you missed your car payment with the used car lot down on 29th Street and they come and get it, not that kind of repo. It seems to me like what research I was able to conduct on this is that what they're calling a repo is a repurchase agreement or a sale and repurchase agreement. Apparently, this is a form of short-term borrowing, mainly in government securities. For example, the dealer will sell the underlying security to investors and by agreement between the two parties, buys them back shortly afterwards, usually the following day at a slightly higher price. It sounds a little bit to me like a payday loan at the pawn shop. <laughs> I boil it down to the simplest terms. <laughs> now, if you know different, please let me know in the comments section. I'm very curious about that. So there's all that, but the thing I didn't quite understand was what did this event in September have to do with the COVID-19 stock market crash, or as I like to call it, the nosedive everyone took in March? And I wonder if maybe there was some sticky issues in big finance way back in September 19th or evidenced in September 19th that perhaps played a factor in the nosedive. I don't know. If you have a clue or a thought about it, I'd be interested to hear about it in the show notes below. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. <laughs> I know I sure did. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. And remember that the link to the playlist will be in the show notes as well. And on YouTube, they'll be right up here in the iCards. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. 
Feel free to share this video with others. And again, be sure and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Too many distractions. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't clean up your script. <laughs> I might leave that part out. <laughs> I don't know how all that's going to go together or if it's even going to make it to the video. We'll just see. That's not going to go. Yeah, we're going to cut those out. And that'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> that might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up. <laughs>